go my friends, we're in. That's our control panel, app center, and access and account settings. I'm gonna go through the control panel and show you what options you get. So look at that, a plethora of options. Let's start with general settings. Usually what I do is I change the system port. What that affects is, is the, this port number over here. So that way if there is any application scanning for this port number, it will be slightly hard to find. Also enable HTTPS. Let's see if it connects. Uh, connection not private, proceed. There you go. So you can connect over HTTPS. This is useful if you're connecting via a router, so you don't want anyone on your network fishing for your packets, finding out what's going on, because everything will be encrypted. But if you have a direct connection like what I'm doing at the moment, you probably don't need this. So next up, let's go general settings. That's the port number for that. Do not allow iframes, that's good. Force connect, secure connection, that's a pretty good option to actually have. Reason why you want to force connections, just so you don't forget to connect via HTTPS rather than HTTP. It will be slightly slower, but you know, for, for a web page, it will, makes no difference. All right, time. You can synchronize with the internet. I've, of course, um, I'm synchronizing it via my laptop. Don't mind about that. So I don't have daylight saving in this state. So that's fine. Fine, I'm encoding English region, system application content service who localize according to section country region. So, okay, so we're global. And show firmware version, that's pretty cool to have and apply that. Okay, storage and snapshots. No need to go in there, security. Allow all connections. So you can enable this and enable all the services. And what it does is it gives you login attempt limits. So if you get, for example, five failed logins within one minute, it's gonna block your IP address for five minutes. This will help stop automated bots which try to guess your password. Personally, I would say uh, within 10 minutes on each of these, five failed attempts. I'm happy to, to wait maybe even a whole day. So that way it will reduce the amount of password guesses these rogue systems can, can do to your computer. Of course, if you type in that amount of incorrect passwords within that amount of time, you will be locked out for that length, but I find this really useful. Uh, password policy, new process, contain characters, force mass user to change their password, don't need that. Hardware, let's see what we're dealing with. Enable standby mode, the LED will turn off within 30 minutes. Enable light signal alert when free storage space is less than three gigabytes, so that's customizable. Enable configuration reset switch run user-defined processes at startup. Um, so this is a Linux-based operating system. Uh, turn on LED light and you can change the brightness. Audio alert, startup. I actually find the audio alerts to be fun, so I'm gonna keep that. Smart fan, fans rotation speed settings. So you can set it manually, but the smart fan will be monitor the temperatures of the system and this adjust the fan accordingly and automatically. So I like that. I wanna put it on quiet mode though, because I'd like to reduce as much noise as possible. And CPU block, CPU fan, smart fan, yes. Monitor your CPU temperature and change it automatically. Graphics card, I don't have one, so I don't need to worry about this. Power settings, all right, so EUP is energy using products. And what this is, is when it's enabled, it will turn off the computer completely so you won't be able to wake up on LAN and uh, you'll save around less than one watt of power. I'm not gonna use a scheduler to wake up my NAS and put my NAS to sleep and have it wake up on LAN. So I'm gonna enable this setting just to save the extra bit of voyage. So that's good. All this stuff's uh, disabled. Notification center, I'm not gonna go into that at the moment. Firmware update. Automate check for updates. Back up all settings and you can restore it. To list out all your external devices, system status, so there we have, we got four gigabytes of RAM, a Pentium Gold, 3.1 gigahertz, that's fast, dual channel memory, you got two two gigabyte memory slots, firmware's 4.4, it's been up for an hour, network, we're just connected directly via the Thunderbolt bridge system service, hardware information, system logs, 
resource monitor. You can see your CPU usage, your memory usage, your network activity, your graphics card if you got one, RAID activity, your disk drive activity. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of tools for you to find out what's going on in your system. So you can list by CPU usage. And right now, a couple of Python scripts are running. And uh, manner request of CGI, that's probably this process. That's uh, pretty cool. There's loads of areas to explore and find out exactly what's going in your system. License center. This is if you want any licenses for security cameras. These are my users. And these are the different connection types I have. So I should have the Windows ones. And I should have uh, allow SSH connection. So if you're not using SSH, uh, you don't need to have this disabled. What SSH does allows you to log into the computer and uh, use Linux commands to explore your system. Uh, FFTP, I don't need that. And these are all the different applications you can run. Antivirus, look at that, that's pretty cool. That robot there, it's telling me how my computer's doing. It's a really fun system and it's pretty, pretty snippy. All right, thanks for watching. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. And of course, let me know what NAS drive you have or what NAS drive you're planning to get. All right, it's time to get some Thunderbolt speed.